You've all probably heard the phrase before, everything's connected. But have you ever thought about what that really means? I personally don't think it's just a nice sounding idea. I think it's scientifically true. In 1964, John Stuart Bell illustrated in quantum theory that any two atoms in the entire universe will later be connected in some sort of way. His theory suggested that no matter how far apart these two atoms are, they will always be intertwined in some shape or form. I believe that this theory also applies in our lives with experiences and ideas. While they may remain separate in our minds, they all eventually come together to form our personal stories and beliefs. My story starts in eighth grade, when my family and I went on a trip to Toronto. My mom's friend, a chemistry professor, told me about something called nanotechnology. He tried to help me understand just how small nanotechnology might be. He said, imagine the width of one single hair. Now, divide that by 100,000 times. How small do you think that is? My eighth grade mind was blown away by the notion of something so small actually being useful. We're used to being able to see and feel technology, such as with our phones and computers. And we really like big, large-scale solutions to problems. So sometimes we forget about the other end of the scale, the side that we can't see or feel. This smaller end of the scale harnesses a technology that is barely three atoms wide, and yet it has the power to clean our oceans, help treat cancer, and make more efficient solar cells. In eighth grade, my mind could barely process what all of this even meant, but I did know one thing. It was pretty cool. A few years later, this topic resurfaced in a pretty surprising place. In Avengers Infinity War, Iron Man reveals a new suit that almost seems to grow and form around him as he walks. He then says, like it, it's nanotech. This got me thinking. By this point, we are using nanotechnology in many different areas and in many different ways. So what exactly was it doing to our environment? Remember, everything's connected, so all of the amazing things that nanotechnology can do are also connected to its potential for disaster. In the, ex in the excitement of invention and discovery, it's really easy to forget that our actions have consequences. In July of 2017, I started to study this problem a little bit further. What I found surprised me a lot. There are an estimated 2,000 consumer products on the market that use nanoparticles, and yet there are no regulations on their commercial usage at all. Additionally, the FDA and CDC do not have any sort of pre-market review or any special handling or labeling for nanoparticle products. What this leads to is nanoparticles inside of consumer products being improperly disposed of. For example, Bowie Company manufactures toothbrushes and washcloths that they advertise as antimicrobial because they contain silver nanoparticles. When consumers use these products, first they put them into and onto their bodies, and then they rinse all the nanoparticles inside down the sink. This is pretty alarming. Why? First, silver nanoparticles in particular have been shown to be extremely toxic to living cells. And secondly, when consumers rinse these products down the sink, they then go into wastewater treatment plants where they aren't filtered out. They then go into nearby streams and aquatic environments where they kill the organisms living there and eventually circle back to our very own drinking water supply. All of these methods of releasing nanoparticles into the environment are extremely detrimental, and they all need to be curbed. Yet, when I looked for scientific articles and risk assessments about nanoparticles in the environment, I surprisingly found next to none. And this is beyond worry, because the field of nanotechnology is expected to triple by the year 2021. This could lead to up to 12 million tons of silver nanoparticles being dumped into the environment every single year. So in September of 2017, I started to investigate a solution to this problem. I began looking more into the different factors that affect nanoparticle toxicity. And a few of the factors that I found that had already been evaluated before were size of the particle, coating on the particle, and dissolution rate. However, another factor that I found that hadn't really been evaluated before was the shape of the particle. Currently, the majority of particles used in industry are spherical in shape. 
I wanted, so I wanted to evaluate different shapes of particles to see if some could be less environmentally toxic than others. I ended up testing nanocubes and nanoplates and compared them in relation to the commonly used nanospheres to see if there was, in fact, any sort of environmental toxicity difference between the three. In order to do this, I conducted two phases of experimentation. The first was bacterial in nature, and the second one involved duckweed, which is a model organism for the aquatic environment. These experiments involved culturing E. coli bacteria and adding nanoparticle solution to evaluate the differences in growth, and also monitoring the spread of duckweed with and without nanoparticle solution. After six months of testing, I found that cubes and plates could be up to 15.4% less environmentally toxic to duckweed than the commonly used nanospheres. However, I also found that there was no significant difference between the toxicities of the shapes to the bacteria. Because the primary usage of nanoparticles inside of consumer products is to kill bacteria in antimicrobial products, what this means is that using the cubes and the plates instead of the spheres would have the exact same consumer product effectiveness with less of the environmental consequences. This was the first time that the effect of shape on toxicity had been specifically tested and actually shown to be less environmentally toxic. I remember for me, this was such an exciting point in my project. Not only had I been able to potentially identify a previously unknown factor that affected nanoparticle toxicity, but I was also able to use that factor to produce a particle that my results showed were up to 15.4% less toxic in the environment. These findings also open up a whole new field of possibilities. What else could impact toxicity? And how could we use that to improve the world around us? For example, many textiles that use nanoparticles could potentially be made stronger or have different properties simply by changing the shape of the particle used. So I'm almost done with my, with my senior year of high school, and I'm beginning to realize the impact that a single person like you and me have on the environment. When I buy a product from the store, everything that I do with that product after I buy it affects those around me and the world around me. Companies like Bowie are inadvertently releasing these nanoparticles into waterways and streams where they kill aquatic life and end up back in the same water that we drink every single day. In order for us as consumers to more confidently buy these products that these companies sell, we need to be aware of exactly what is inside of these products and also all of the potential detriments that could come from using them. So I'd like to end by taking a step back. I think one of the most exciting things about doing research is the application of it. Sort of like with quantum theory, you can almost imagine all of the atoms around you that came together to form all of these innovative ideas and how they relate to the people around you. Likewise, you can also imagine all of the potential that still exists around us right now. Similarly to with, with environmental toxicity with silver nanoparticles, I like to go back to my sixth grade science class where I first learned the joy of discovery through making ice cream with simple chemical reactions. By experiencing this, I realized how such little things can physically change the world around us. Likewise, by working on research such as environmental nanotechnology, or simply just by understanding how buying one little product from the store has such a potentially huge impact, I believe we can come to better understand how we can personally make the world a better place. And that's a scene I want to be a part of making. Thank you. <laughs>